Hello and welcome to PE Buddy. Mr. D here. Today you're going to learn about oxygen and exercise. This video is brought to you by Heart Sport. So by the end of this video, you'll know what the function of oxygen is. You'll know oxygen deficit, steady state, and epoch. Let's dive in. So oxygen, also known as O2, two oxygen molecules binded together. This is used to create ATP through aerobic respiration. Breathe in through the air. Now the air has a lot of other elements in it, such as nitrogen and carbon dioxide, but our body's only interested in the oxygen for now. Oxygen is essential for aerobic exercise, which is roughly two minutes or longer, depending on the person's fitness levels, the type of exercise and the intensity. And it's carried around in the blood via the red blood cells. So this is what it looks like. When we breathe in, oxygen is flooded into our lungs. When we breathe out, carbon dioxide is exited through the lungs. On the right here, we have a visual representation with color. So in green, we can see the oxygen coming into the lungs through the alveoli, being passed through the capillaries into the bloodstream. This is happening all the time and even faster while we exercise. Now, one of the byproducts of exercise is actually carbon dioxide. So you can see in red here, when we breathe out, we breathe out carbon dioxide. This process is happening continually, day in, day out, 24-7. So we're going to start with oxygen deficit. This occurs at the beginning of exercise, and this occurs because the aerobic system takes about two minutes to warm up, depending on the intensity, the type of activity, etc. In the meantime, the anaerobic systems, we have two, the ATPPC and the anaerobic glycolysis system, they provide ATP. This is what's known as oxygen deficit. Deficit just means not enough. So in the graph on the right over here, we can see what this means represented visually. In the first 10 seconds, the dominant energy provider is the ATP PC system here in pink. This trails off really quickly. Then we can see in yellow, the anaerobic glycolysis system. This provides a little bit of ATP. And we can see represented in blue here is the aerobic system. Now this takes a couple of minutes, as we mentioned, to warm up to become the dominant provider of energy. Once that is warmed up, that can provide ATP hours. So we're going to use this graph to help us understand this concept a little bit further. So on the vertical axis here we have oxygen consumption. So down the bottom very low, up the top quite high. And on the horizontal axis we have time. So starting with rest, beginning of exercise, middle of exercise, end of exercise and recovery time. So for oxygen deficit, that's this blue triangle in the corner here. As we spoke about before, as soon as we start exercising, our body obviously needs some energy to power this exercise. So because the aerobic system takes a few minutes to warm up, it's covered by the anaerobic systems. This is what's called oxygen deficit. Moving on to steady state now, this simply means in equals out. This occurs during moderate exercise with a consistent intensity. This just means that the ATP and oxygen requirement of the body for that particular exercise intensity is being met comfortably by the aerobic system. In equals out. Intensity depends on the person and fitness level, but the average is around 50 to 70% of our maximum heart rate, or the hardest we can possibly work. Again, on this graph here, we can see the blue line starting to rise and plateau about here. This is where steady state is occurring. And on this graph, steady state is occurring up here. So once the aerobic system has warmed up at this point here, we enter steady state where the amount of energy and oxygen required is being met and we're able to continually work between that 50 and 70% of max heart rate. And finally, we have EPOC. EPOC stands for Excess Post-Exercise Oxygen Consumption. Now you've probably experienced this before. As soon as you finish any kind of aerobic activity, your body continues to breathe quite hard for quite some time. Now this is also known as the oxygen depth, and it's very simply trying to get enough oxygen into our body to return the body to rest. This is related but not identical to oxygen deficit. So for the final time, we'll return to this graph and we'll focus on the last section here, which is epoch. So right up the top corner here, this is as soon as we finish exercise. There is a rapid drop in oxygen consumption. So we'll still be breathing quite hard, but not quite as hard as we were during steady state. 
and then this rapid component starts to plateau a little bit. Now this recovery time, depending on the person's fitness level and type of activity, could be a few hours, half a day, or even a full day. So you will notice that this triangle component here of EPOC looks quite similar to the oxygen deficit component. Now this is because they are related but not identical. So the bigger the oxygen deficit in general, the bigger the EPOC section of the graph because we need longer to recover to bring the body back to the state of rest. So here's a quick summary of everything we've just learned about oxygen and exercise. So oxygen is required to create ATP, which is the body's energy currency, via the aerobic energy system to fuel exercise. Oxygen deficit occurs at the beginning of exercise, and this is because the aerobic system takes a few minutes to warm up and become the dominant energy provider. So in the meantime, this is covered by the anaerobic systems, ATP, PC, and the anaerobic glycolysis system. We then hit steady state. This is where the oxygen requirement for the exercise intensity and duration is being met comfortably by the aerobic system. This could be about 50 to 70% of max heart rate. And then as soon as we finish exercise, we hit EPOC. EPOC stands for excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. And this simply returns the body to rest. Now the amount here is related to oxygen deficit, but not the same. Okay, it's quiz time. Let's see what you've learned. Grab a piece of paper and a pen to answer these questions. Question number one, what is oxygen used for? A, fueling the body, B, breathing, C, creating ATP, or D, changing the pH of blood? Pause the video, think about it, write down your answer. Correct answer is C, creating ATP. Number two, which comes first? A, epoch, B, steady state, or C, oxygen deficit? The correct answer is C, oxygen deficit. Question number three, what does steady state mean? A, exercise intensity is steady. B, oxygen requirement is being met by the aerobic system. C, oxygen requirement is being met by the anaerobic system. Or D, oxygen is being compensated for. The correct answer is B, oxygen requirement is being met by the aerobic system. Question four, lucky last, EPOC stands for A, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, B, excess post-oxygen consumption, C, exercise post-oxygen continuum, or D, equal post-oxygen consumption. Correct answer is A, EPOC stands for excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. Congratulations, you made it. Hope you learned something, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll answer them in the comments below. If you want to learn more, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. See ya.